All right. So, Health Friday conversation. Let's talk about autism. Um, the what autism is all about, and when autism leads to delayed speech in children. We are joined by Wamboi Mbog. Wamboi is a speech therapist. Good morning, Wamboi. Good morning to you too. Welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Did you have a good uh, Madaraka day? Well, so so. What with is so-so? Yeah. With uh, the economy and everything happening, uh, yeah. it's still so-so. <laughs> on which side of the so are you? Are you on the lower side of the so or the higher side the of the so? The in-between. The in-between, the yeah. so-so? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You get it? No, I don't actually. You don't get it, forget about it. <laughs> you know, so-so is really in-between. <laughs> so the in-between of the so-so, yeah. what is that exactly? The You're father in-between. The uh, father in-between. Yes. <laughs> you know you know, you know, know that renders you now Unanda to South. Unanda. <laughs> 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 Usijali mm. tumepanga mm-hmm. tutahakikisha mm-hmm. Siti mm-hmm. mpatie dada medhali ya leo Yes medhali ya leo ya mm. nchi inaitwa Madagascar mm. I'm talking about the capital city <laughs> Madagascar the country Sadness is a valuable treasure only discovered in people you love Sadness is a valuable treasure only discovered in people you love. Hey. Oh boy, this proverb, does it make sense to you? Huh. It's only people you care about that can make you sad. Ay, 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 ay. What? It's that simple. Does it make <laughs> It's only people that you care about that can make you sad. Yeah, their perceptions, the way they look at things, the way they make you feel matters. That is why you get the feeling of sadness. You have to care, have a degree of caring towards someone or a situation for it to matter to you. Huh. Somebody you care about, whatever they do, whatever they pss, will affect you one way or the other. Somebody you don't care about. Ah, that's a good one. It is quite. That's a good, that's a deep one. It's a deep one. Thank you for joining us today, Omboi. Autism is what we want to discuss today. Let's first of all start by defining autism. What is autism? So autism in simple terms, rather, is um, it's what we call a neurodevelopmental disorder that affects communication, it affects uh, social interaction and behavior. And uh, further into that, we cannot say there is one thing that causes autism. The way you would ask, what causes autism? And most parents will ask that. We all know that uh, a virus causes this problem and there is a medication for that. For autism, research has not, or rather scientists have not specifically said this is the cause of autism, but rather it's a combination of genetic factors and environmental factors that lead to autism. Hmm. Yes. Neurodevelopmental de- disorder. <clears throat> yeah. That means b- born with it or does it develop at some point after birth? No, you're bored with it. It's not like um, something like, let's say, if a child falls and they are hit in the head, mm. they could have a challenge that is traumatic brain injury. That yes. is an acquired challenge. Yes. However, autism, you're born with it. There's nothing that would say at, at a certain point this happened. Mm. Mm. And that is why we are seeing in developed countries at birth, we have a speech therapist in the Middle an occupational therapist in the Middle and in an ideal situation, that is how it should be. So most of these things are detected early enough because early identification leads to early intervention. You call it uh, neuro what again? Neurodevelopmental. Break that down for us, please. So the neuro means the brain. Mm. It's not a physical entity. Mm. So and it develops. It's gradual. It's not one thing. That it's not the way it appears in child A. It will appear in child B. It is different. Autism is unique to an individual and a child. Mm. Yeah. So how, what are these ways in which it manifests itself? So you mean the red flags, I assume. So some of these red flags, and I'll I'll put a disclaimer with the red flags that I'm going to give. Some of these things, you might notice them in in children who we call typical and atypical. So typical is what we call, quote unquote, normal children. This Mm. is how a child should be. And some of these red flags that I I, I will highlight may also not be in a child with autism. So some of them are la- lack of eye contact or interest in others. Mm. There is a delayed e- or absence of speech and language. Then there is also repetitive behaviors. They mm. want a specific thing. That, like They could be arranging cars 
specifically from red all the way to black in mm. that order and what we might say oh my child has ocd mm. and all that mm. yeah the other thing is lacking interest in playing with others so they prefer independent play more than associative play <coughs> we know children are social being and exploring they just want to be by themselves completely yeah. the other thing is they have unusual reaction to sensory stimuli and in this i'll ask you guys a question how many senses do we have Five, six. Oh, wait a moment. Uh, are they the same <laughs> in the daytime and at night? Or? Yeah. <laughs> or Friday? Or, or Friday, Friday senses or Monday senses? <laughs> Let's just say science senses. <laughs> the ones that she learned is how many we senses do we have? We five. Five. Then they mm. say there's some salient ones, no? Uh huh. We have. You are taught five. Hey. How good were you? Talking? They had reduced them by the time they were. <laughs> no, they increased them by the time I think they got to. Know. Oh. Uh -huh. mm. You were taught two, three, three, three. three. Mm. So Which which are this? Sight, mm -hmm. touch, but when I forget, smell, smell, hey, see, yeah. Yeah. taste, <laughs> uh huh, taste. and hearing. Yes, mm. those are five. We oh. have eight senses. They were those ones also. <laughs> 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 it's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have eight senses. Uh -huh. eight? Yes, we do have eight okay. senses. And I know that people say, Oh, the sixth one, common sense. Oh, well, they say common sense is not so common, but uh. <laughs> We have eight senses. Apart from the five you know, uh -huh. we have interoception, which is how you feel. When you're hungry, you don't need to be told by there you're hungry. You feel that you're hungry. Right. So interoception is understanding the workings of your inner, uh, inner uh, organs. Mm -hmm. Then we have mm -hmm. proprioception is understanding your place in space. Mm -hmm. That is why you walk upright with your head up, not like this. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Then mm -hmm. the last one is vestibular. Vestibular is balance. When you're walking, you walk in a specific straight line. And you will notice, um, I digress from the topic today, but a child who, is, uh, who was born prematurely, they, have yet, they are yet to develop that sense of balance, vestibular, and they will tend to misstep, wobble a bit. Wobble mm. a bit. And when you walk next to them, because your you what is guiding them, they will now walk straight. You move away, they go back to the wobbling. So that those are the eight senses. And a child, um, some, some red flags for children with autism is a child might, not, might have overstimulation in these senses or unusual relation with these stimuli in their senses. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, I need to ask you something. Mm -hmm. Because we've seen with some of these um, conditions that don't have a physiological makeup that they will say you could be predisposed to this if this were to happen. Is autism one of them? For example, you say... Uh, uh, mother during pregnancy may have eaten such and such family who live in certain areas then predisposed because of one two three does autism fall into this category in any way it in, at some point it does like mm -hmm. remember when i said aut some the two main causes of uh, rather some of the way it's been said that autism comes about is because of the genetic factor which mm -hmm. is with genetic factor comes in the pre genetic predisposition mm -hmm. and environmental factors okay. and um Right now, we're having a lot of, we're getting to work with a lot of children with what the, the pediatricians or neurodevelopmental specialists are calling virtual autism. Okay. We, what virtual autism is, and most parents will come at me with this, is too much screen time. Mm -hmm. So when kids have access to screen at a very young age, they're not allowed to interact with us people. Mm. Children do not learn how we they do not listen to what we say they they're not imitate. social then children are social beings they mm. imitate what we do they mm. do not do what we tell them mm. and what are we doing we have a screen the child has coca melon they say oh my child sings says the letters does this but my child does not communicate what is the problem so they will catch up mm. and the challenge is not they will catch up if today i told you i have an italian tv station please start watching it then come to speak to me in italian are you able to you would mm. You will not. As a child, as a child, you would. Actually, no. What you will have is a repetition. Oh, you okay. will sing along to the music. Mm -hmm. Right now, most of us can sing rumba. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And but, lingala. And lingala. But we have Bravo no clue what oh, it I means. See what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So are you? So essentially, what? So are you saying that then autism can be acquired as a condition? Because you said before mm -hmm. that you're born with it, mm -hmm. but then now we are saying that some of that the condition can come from doing other things like this screen time so can you acquire it as you go along and we're talking about babies infants we're talking about children and in then infants not may have been born with it or would you have been predisposed to it and then behavior as you grow older 
establishes the condition is that what you're saying yeah it is exactly that and the, but look at it this way from a speech therapist point of view that's why we do not diagnose and we have a neurodevelopmental specialist coming in for that so when the diagnosis is done what we equip parents with is what can you do to ensure that you're not putting your child at risk okay. like i've said is what the doctors are uh, um diagnosing right now is virtual autism mm. for lack of a better word is this child if they were in a different condition they would have been a social child they would have had their speech at, at, at the right age but because of the environmental factors that you've put in place you are putting the child at risk okay. of these conditions yeah how would parents know your mother father whatever mm -hmm. how would you know if your child then was displaying this behavior that was then not normal and that could be autistic like the red flags I've given earlier, yes. mm. yeah. So the eye contact is mm. one of them. Lack of inter, uh, interest to play with others. Mm. Lack of imaginative play. Mm. Like a child with peekaboo that makes sense to a child. Six months, you start playing, Im having imaginative play, mm. or just taking a spoon and pretending to a pretend play. Basically, is what yeah. I'm talking about. Mm. Then it is just social interaction and behavior. If you notice that this child, when it get, they get into a place, you're playing music and their first instinct is hands over the ears mm. and the music is not overly loud that would be stressful to you or there's light and they just, they have a facial grimace in this situation. Then you can tell that this is not normal, quote mm. unquote, because if, if music is too loud, the reaction is not to scream and shout and run away. It is to ask, how else can 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 I walk away? Or oh, it's too loud. Could you reduce the volume? Yeah. There is a response to every scenario or stimuli that we have, mm. and that is what it should be, or rather, normal, quote mm. unquote. So if parents notice, my child is in some situations when we are amongst other children, doesn't want to play with children, doesn't want interaction with anybody else but me, who they're used to. You should seek a second opinion. And when it comes to language, language, I want to be very specific: not speech, but language. All right. What's okay. the difference? The, now, speech is what you're doing right now, the verbose. Mm. All right. Language is using words to communicate. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, speech can be both verbal and non-verbal. Mm. Because if I did this, do you understand what I'm asking for? Food. Exactly. If you did what? Again? If I did this, this is food, right? Mm -hmm. If I if I said this, mm. give me that. You understand I'm asking for something to drink, to drink. isn't it? Yep. Yeah, so that is nonverbal communication. If I shake my head like this, you understand. Not not the one you're thinking, oh, I drink. It's Friday, I understand. Mm. Unless, you're in some parts of, <laughs> unless you're in some parts of South America where you shake your head and it means And it yes. means yes. But so, in yeah. the African end... Um, <laughs> only. <we> have, <laughs> or in India. <laughs> India, when you shake your head, you mean yes only. Yeah. But we have to also remember that these conditions, most of the information that we have mm. is very Western. European, this very minimal. That is what we are doing right now. Mm. We are researching in the African Kenyan context what it means. Because when you tell a child to look at you in the eye, it is taboo to look at an elder person in there and just talk to them when you're looking at them in the eyes. Yeah. But it is essential in the European American context to mm. look at someone and they're talking. So we are doing research and further research in the African and Kenyan context specifically to understand how does autism. Disp what are the red flags in our setup? In Kenyan in Kenya, I have to ask this question. Yes, so are we saying, for instance, let's talk about autism generally. Yeah. A child with autism whose natural mean is not to look at someone directly. Are we trying to suggest that if the child was an African, they would react differently from a child who was a European <coughs> and if they both had autism? It is. It's been even boys and girls. Yes, it's different. It does even for two children from the same location. Autism appears differently. It's unique. Yes. yes. Now, I'm mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. a strain of autism that mm -hmm. is similar in both. Okay? Mm -hmm. A child who doesn't quite look at you directly. The look, social or, or, he always, always looks elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I'm simply trying to determine mm -hmm. that is this just a human condition that may be exhibited in autism and is there a specific difference if that autism is in a child who is either European or Western, uh, or is it, if it's in an African, then the question would have to be asked, what if it's in an Asian? Yeah, so uh, the red flags that we give, we do not look at them at specifically one at a time. We look at this child, does this child have at least five of these eight red flags? Mm -hmm. Like, is the child ticking all this? For any condition you have to look, are you checking all the boxes? Not just one, because you'll find a typ uh, typical developing children who have no other condition, but still they, they may enjoy 
playing we have no, to no. They, they want to be alone there's nothing they have no issue they understand everything mm. they have no behavior issues but they prefer playing by themselves we cannot say this child has autism because they prefer mm. playing by themselves mm. we have to look at it from this perspective are you checking all these boxes are you hitting all these red flags what are the other delays in milestones that you're having what are those unique issues that you're having so that's why we bring <coughs> a neurodevelopmental specialist who will come and check and work with the child for a longer duration before the diagnosis is made you cannot see a child for one session and say all right this one has autism mm. it has to be multiple sessions in different environments because how a child comes to a clinic for example I'm, I'm based in AAR hospital so if a child comes to the AAR clinic and i see them from there the way the environment of AAR is is unique from their home environment this child might be very quiet in the AAR hospital clinic but when we go home they are all over the place they are playing with everybody they are playing yep. with the neighbors mm. when they go to school they are again very quiet and cowardly because the teacher pale mwalimu is well watch out you know our 844 systems so all those and right we have to look at all those areas what is happening how is a child uh, how is a child like in all these different scenarios yeah mm. yeah and i think i see what city you're asking it's probably maybe the from the context of the adult yes in terms of uh, looking and noticing these red flags mm. because if we as africans know that you know you are brought up and you bring up a child to understand the difference between a child and an adult and how whether you look at an adult directly or not mm -hmm. so you will not be looking out for whether this child is looking at you directly mm -hmm. in the face yeah. so you will not notice because this is a child not looking at you that is the normal child yes <laughs> you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. and prob probably that's what you're talking about now what you're working on to contextualize yes. these red flags in an african way yes. so that you know what to look out for exactly andrew is saying there are some children who may have delayed speech because they have a problem with hearing true how do you detect that ah great that's a great one because um speech and autism do not always work hand in hand it mm. is part of them but it is not speech delay in itself it can be because of hearing problems it can be again because like i mentioned traumatic brain mm. now hearing problems the first location will ask a child and the first person they see we are in the specialist speech therapist in the specialist category so they will see a pediatrician who will refer them to a neurodevelopmental specialist mm. or if it's a hearing problem an audiologist so what we do is we ensure that we work as a multidisciplinary mm. what do i mean it is not that i am working with this child by myself and we achieve everything we have a pediatric neurologist we have an occupational therapist we have a, a physiotherapist if need be we have an audiologist coming in we have an ENT specialist of course the child would be first sent to ENT mm. if it's hearing issues to identify what kind of hearing is it and then but if a child is born deaf between 0 to 3 years there is something that can be done mm. a cochlear implant can be done mm. and after a cochlear implant is done then they will be sent to us in speech therapy after of course we work with the audiologist at that point where there is mapping of that so that we can start teaching them how do how are sounds like right. remember how you hear what god created in your uh, the hearing part of it and what we manufacture the sound systems are a bit different mm -hmm. the same way if you broke your hand and you have a a titanium name road put in the, your functionality is slightly it's not different the same. from yeah. mine if it's mm. just born yeah so the same thing so we come in as speech therapists in terms of language mapping and shaping and and teaching children what we start with the simplest sounds which are environmental sounds how mm. do you start hearing it so there's something that can be done but ENT tells us what is the condition an audiologist does the mapping tells us where is the he child hearing at did you know at where we hear mm. it is negative 10 to 25 decibels decibels yeah, yeah? if a child is hearing between 20 to 30 then they have a challenge with hearing their sounds mm. they will not hear mm. if it goes it keeps going from mild to profound to severe then there is interventions for all those areas okay yeah um now when established that a child then is autistic mm -hmm. what are some of the interventions then that are necessary i mean we know about speech therapy yeah. and that's absolutely important because there's delayed speech mm -hmm. uh, delayed communication on that level um Do children who are autistic need to be in a different learning environment from other children? After an evaluation by um, an education psychologist, mm -hmm. that an education psychologist determines does this child is this child going to be to function well in a mainstream? Mm -hmm. Do they need more intervention? Because mm -hmm. I think what we have done here in Kenya and we are really trying is having set up a special unit, but we are not equipping the teachers in that room to understand. this child has autism 
Mm. And this autism is not like you've seen child B. Theirs occurs differently. Mm. So we need this intervention. So a special needs teacher is vital in this environment. An applied behavior specialist is very important. Mm -hmm. What an applied behavior specialist does is in everything we do, as we are growing, everything is a behavior, including language. How do you react? If somebody pushes you, mm -hmm. how do you react? Do you pick a rock and hit them? Mm -hmm. Do you go report them to the teacher? How do you react? Mm -hmm. So we t in applied behavior analysis, that is taught how to deal with behavior. Mm -hmm. If a child is overstimulated, they cannot say this room is lit up, beautifully lit up, but there's a child who will come here and this is annoying and stimulating. It's too bright. It's, yeah. too bright. it's too annoying. It's too in your face. Mm -hmm. What do I do? I will start hitting it. So how do you relate with that? You can request for the light to be changed. That an, uh, an occupational therapist comes in because of the sensory stimuli. If it's just balanced, if you're sitting and this child is all over the place, what is what are they seeking or what are, are they running away from? Mm -hmm. So they assess that and then they intervene in that perspective. So it's not, it cannot be, I cannot give an answer right now saying, yeah. yes, they need a special class. Yeah. But after an, inter uh, an assessment by an educational psychologist, then they will advise in regards to academics, matters academics. Mm. It's been said that some children who display as autistic also are geniuses. That their capacity for knowledge, understanding, and even to be able to surpass when it comes to subject matter, then is phenomenal. What's the explanation behind that that's very true um, autism is a spectrum disorder meaning we have a whole range mm. it's not just one like this is how it appears so in spectrum it means that there's a child who is really what they considered before it was called high functioning autism mm -hmm. think of top of my head mark zuckerberg has mm -hmm. autism mm -hmm. or was called asperger's syndrome then they, they you'll find there's a child who functions at what they call the lowest end of the spectrum which this child will for life need support mm -hmm. even as an adult they will still function as if they are three-year-old okay they, they are 47 in mm. age but the mental capacity is that of a three-year-old so they're still having their tantrums they're having a, their issues then there's the other one who is in the middle point of midpoint maybe who sometimes has challenges sometimes can function so it's a whole range that is why we say you have to first of all understand what is your child, what is their child's ability. There's one unique thing that children with autism also have. Mm. They can be savants. A savant is somebody who is perfect in one specific thing. Mm. That um, I remember there's a child I worked with. If he looked at you like this, he will draw you from that position. Even if you left, just need to look at you for like 20 seconds. Then the, take pen and paper and draw exactly how you look like. Right. All right. So that's a savant. There's one who would, you would ask the birthdays of anyone. In the, as long as they asked you your birthday once. They got it. You will ask them years later. I call this child and she will call me up and like, uh, tomorrow is Mr. So-and-so's birthday, right? And I'm like, what? <laughs> I have no clue about that. Or oh, someone you asked them, so what was the date in 1814, January 15? What day was it? Like this, tell mm. you it was a Wednesday or a Tuesday. And we cannot do that. They cannot tell you how they do it. Mm. They are a servant for them. They see it and it appears exactly as it should be. Yeah. This Health Friday conversation is about autism. And Wambo Imbogo, a speech therapist, is our guest. Before we start checking some of the questions that I'm seeing on social media, Wamboi, what's a speech therapist? So a speech therapist is a specialist who deals with not only mother's speech as the name says it, but we work in areas in speech itself. In feeding and swallowing, I know this is new, right? Fluency. Fluency. And voice. So fluency, let me just... Uh, fluency is somebody with a stammer. We work with people who have a stammer or a stutter or a clutter. Or a murmur. Mm -hmm. or a murmur? <laughs> <laughs> a clutter or a stammer. <laughs> not a murmur. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For a minute there, I thought we were talking about a heart murmur, <laughs> not how I felt. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> what did you have in mind, Ndu? Well, there's people who will not be able to enunciate or mm -hmm. clarify their people words. Eat their words. People who eat their words and yes. put everything yes. together. That's mm -hmm. called a clutter. It's called a clutter. It's a clutter. Yeah, somebody who clutters goes... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's a clutter. Okay. And then you guys are part of our clientele. People who use voice professionally. Mm. So what do you do with us? <laughs> so with you, we teach you proper strategies of voice use. And we train you on what we call voice therapy. So you stop using... Let me give you a quick example. Right now, all three of you, breathe in. No, like br proper breathing. How, a big uh, one, you know the deep breathing in? How mm. do you breathe in in <laughs> You do this. You use your chest muscles. Okay. Mm. Proper breathing is, 
remember biology from when you tummy. breathe in exactly the diaphragm goes down and outwards Which pushing is, your belly out the diaphragm exactly right here okay. <laughs> so when you're breathing in your belly should go out your chest should you, your shoulders and chest should stay still belly oh. pushes out yes now that's a deep breath mm -hmm. and you should use that to speak and that's why you find by the end of the day for most voice professionals they're so tired in the throat because they've been using this to speak what do you call the head voice you use from here, Use from your, your belly. To speak. Yes. I'm not speaking to you with my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the other thing that we are culprits of, for especially professional voice users, is this thing. <clears throat> <clears throat> yes. Yeah. <clears throat> That's not proper. You you're going to be one of our clients. What so are we what supposed to do? You're supposed to either drink water or cough, like a deep cough, <clears throat> like that. Because if there is an irritation to your throat, that is what you should do. If you do that, what happens when you're speaking, the vocal folds do like waves in the ocean, mm. all right? But when you do the clearing of the voice, what you do is you bug them together. And that does what? That causes scarring and irritates that area more. Uh, yes. Wonder. And you, you have voice, you say, oh, my voice at the end of a day, their day, I have a voice So when issue. I feel irritated, I should cough. Cough, like not. Or drink water. <clears throat> a proper cough, like, yes drink some water to clear that so if there is okay. anything in the throat it will it will just go down okay awesome yeah so this is what you do to help for example our children yeah for children now uh children is the f one of the things we'll, we work with children is the stomach itself mm. feeding swallow feeding and swallowing and our language all right mm. now for what is causing uh, for language I'll, I'll move in into language mainly now for language what do we do as speech therapists what do we do in language is the question you're asking mm. so in language what we teach is from the first part the phonological aspect of language and i went to the science of it mm. is the sound system from our uh, all us mm. all right then we move to the word systems so a cow a cat a dog that's the word system mm. then we use those words to form sentences more milk more tea more food now what you'll notice for a parent to realize my child has a delay in speech is this child at six months this should be bubbling already mm. we start communicating very early not speech communicating very early at birth you're communicating the child cries you know hey you're ninja mm. the child does script that this child is happy mm. so we we start with communication mm. then there's the bubbling if your child is not bubbling or cooing the ba 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 mm. mm, all those you should be it should be a point of worry mm. now by the age of 1.4 if the child at uh, that's 16 months if a child has no words, you should start thinking of an intervention. Start, of course, start by the environment. Mm. Do we have too much screen? Because research shows that children uh, below the age of 18 months, if they're exposed to 30 minutes of screen time a day, mm -hmm. they're at, at risk of having a speech delay. 30 minutes screen 30 time, min as in TV. TV, phone, anything that is a screen. What you want a child to have is talk to them. Look, oh, see, the car is going very fast. Mm. Speak to them like that. Think of this. For mom, mothers, they were talking to the child in the belly. When the child is out, now they no longer talk to them. It's they talk at them, not to them. Mm -hmm. This is at 13 months. At 14 months, the child should months. be having words. No, no, no. We're saying mm. that, sorry, you uh -huh. talked about the screen time yes. for children. Mm -hmm. And if they're not, if they're doing 30 plus... 30 minutes a day at what below age? eight below 18 months uh -huh. the child is at risk of speech delay are there children who are watching tv at 18 months for more than 30 minutes a day oh, let alone 18 mm. months two months we have a child is exposed to a screen they have a screen when they're eating with their breastfeeding they have a screen near them they have a tablet when they sleep music now there's mm. a difference between music being played in the room perfect okay music is okay perfect what sort of music well, whatever music you listen to <laughs> in your house you can be listening to house music in your house rock music i don't know whatever you're listening to what you want is that is perfect but a screen where a child is glued to a screen that is what is causing challenges okay yes now several questions that are on social media uh, -huh. uh Ndu, maybe you can take some of them okay my two and a half year old son has a delayed speech and i'm decided to take him to a play group and suddenly he's overly hyper he likes adults more than his fellow children who fear him is that a red flag i would say it is you need to come in for a consult already mm -hmm. you've highlighted that my child has a speech delay uh -huh. uh, prefers adults to children you know why because as an adult you have the patience to wait for the child to do something their peers do not have the patience to wait for them. Mm -hmm. So bring them in for an assessment. And it might be just, we will assess and find out what is causing that issue. How is the home environment? A child is like a flower. When a flower is not blossoming 
or blooming mm. we do not work on the flower we work on the environment mm. how is the soil like, soil like do we need to add more fertilizer what input do we need to do mm. like i mentioned we tend to talk at our children not mm. to our children that is also causing most of the challenges something yeah. else i would like to ask yes you, as a child develops some of these issues that are related to autism do we find the prevalence higher in children who have other siblings or do we tend to find them in children who are the only child in the family I'll give you this as an honest response is I don't know how the clear statistics to give that because we have no way of knowing who who necessarily has it because mm-hmm. uh, we've encountered like that most of the children I've worked with you find it's either the eldest child or the last born child mm-hmm. so you don't they may have other siblings mm-hmm. or they may be only children okay. where I'm going with this is mm-hmm. when then one wants to intervene mm-hmm. and ensure that whatever influence or effects of autism are reduced to a manageable level to a level where the child can actually function acceptably would then the presence of siblings be a help or a hindrance it is of course a help having peers to play with and talk to it is of course a help because mm. children uh, what happens with children is they ape what is happening in their environment and from mm. their peers mainly so that's why when we having a, a therapy session we would have what we call glu- group sessions for group session we have peers of the same age it might not be similar conditions but they might be similar challenges they are having but they are within the same age group and you find like uh, and they that this child will respond even better even in a group setup when a peer says pass me the block or give me the block they will imitate that statement give me more than they would when i'm having a session with them one on one because they are learning from their peer mm. yes you know when you say learning from their peers you know we often relate that statement to children and yet i find it's the same in adults true that uh, people are influenced more by their peers whether the adults whether the adolescents whether the young adults it's the same so essentially these habits that we have they are more noticeable in our childhood but we seem to carry them with us for the rest of our lives yeah when we grow up we start what we we start shaping and aping we just know uh when i'm talking to eric he prefers when I, i i look away when talking to him so i just make that as a behavior but when i talk to you muga mm. i i know you like when somebody looks at you so i'll, I'll do that mm. we learn how to work with our environment and that is it is more noticeable in children because we zoom into them in adults it's just or, or teenagers say oh, that's just bad behavior mm. and we move away from it mm. but we forget that a child with autism becomes an adult with autism So it doesn't end it doesn't stop being autism they just learn behaviors of how to cope with their environment but from what you're saying yeah. then it appears that yes you may have interventions for the child but there seems to be an even greater need to attend to the parents because getting the parents to understand the condition that their child has and being able to understand how best they can manage and help this child grow and to become uh uh um not not only an acceptable term I'm you uh, an adult and to function normally in the environment that journey seems to be even greater with mm-hmm. the parents because the child with autism that's how they are mm. it's the parents who have what one may refer to as a sense of what ought to be normal mm-hmm. who then have to be taken through that journey of accepting this particular situation that's true and that is why when we having our sessions the first session is mainly centered to the what we call a caregiver workshop mm. is who is in the child's life the mom the dad the grandma whoever is in that child's life is who we we, we talk to mm. and we continue with we have uh, we have workshops that we we create where we invite parents over the break we invite parents to come in ask your questions observe us play with your children because children we will not do a speech session where the child is seated here and I'm across and I'm saying what is this cow what is this book what is this chair that is not speech uh, in speech therapy speech therapy is using play mm. because the business of a child is by and large play So we use play we have a can we are moving in the moving of the car we have following instruction mm. listening and responding we have all this so yes it is important for us to take and we work very closely with psychologists mm. because remember when a, ch- a parent is given a diagnosis they go through the grief process yeah they are grieving so how do you know, you've been told your child has autism that is what you're told then we expect you to continue functioning with this child we have to take to understand that this is not what they were expecting when they were giving birth to that child 
when they were having that child they were planning for the child they were planning for quote unquote a normal child an easy of course they were expecting challenges but they were not expecting the challenges that they are seeing currently mm. so they are going through the grieving process they're mm. going through denial mm. bargaining everything and we work very closely with counselors and psychologists so that they can also help support the parents sure yeah Another question that comes in, my son was normal speech-wise, could communicate, but withdrew after the sister was born and has now been diagnosed with autism. Could this have been due to too much screen time? Is a question. Good question. But I cannot say it's just one thing that caused that. Mm. Remember, how are you interact you look at it from this point? How are you interacting with the child when they were just the child themselves mm. in the mm. household? How are you talking to them? How are you playing with them? The sister has come in. Mm. So it could be if I keep quiet, then mommy has attention with for me. Yeah. But when I talk, because uh, you can communicate, you will mm. leave you. Baby is crying. When baby cries, mommy goes towards them. So what do I do? I cry, mm. mommy gives me attention. So they learn a behavior. It's how we will, now what you do in such a situation, we will ask the parent, how is the home environment? Mm. How is the home setup? How much time are you getting to spend with this child as well and playing with them? Right. Who, yeah, who is playing <coughs> with them? So that is <coughs> important, yeah. Is there a cut of age by which a child with delayed speech must start therapy? 14 months, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 16 months, we we'll say just come for a consult with us. What if someone doesn't come? A child goes into one year, two years, three years. You still because can you can imagine, I mean, across the country, mm -hmm. very many parents, if a child has not started speaking, then you're already starting to think, okay, maybe there's a problem, maybe this child will not be able to speak, and you move on. Because I can imagine, I yeah. mean, no usual village health facilities do not have the kind of expertise we are talking about. That's true. Mm. So and what happens when a child with delayed speech is delayed in seeking therapy? We still intervene. Of course, we do not expect that this speech will be acquired. At, at a certain point, we f the first intervention we do is, if a child is older, we look at what else could have caused it. Like we, we send you to an audiologist, the hearing is checked. Mm. We, we check, are there other underlying conditions that are affecting speech? And remember, we do not on, we do <coughs> not teach speech in speech therapy. We teach communication because if you can communicate, there are different ways of communicating. If this child cannot say cup, but we give them, uh, we call them uh, AAC devices, argumentative, alternative argumentative communication. Or you have a tablet and you click, you tap on a picture and the picture says the word for you. Mm. We give you a model of communication because we say communication is a right, not a privilege. Every child should be able to communicate. Every individual should be able to communicate. So what what are the other ways we can teach you to communicate as we work towards a speech if that child is able to have speech as we work towards that journey how can we introduce a form of communication for that child so that is what we look at first of all a mode of communication mm -hmm. that reduces the behavior issues because as a child communicates behavior problems go down mm -hmm. yeah okay um is autism the same as i don't know asperger uh well, Asperger's. Mm. So, uh, Asp oh, it's spelled differently. Okay. Yeah. It's just, uh, so, autism, Asperger's is a part of what currently in what we call the, uh, we, we use what we call DSM-5 for diagnosis. It's mm. a diagnostic tool that is used. So, initially, Asperger's was different from autism, mm -hmm. but right now they've put it under one title, mm -hmm. under one umbrella, which is autism. Like the way it was years ago, um, before 2013, mm -hmm. we had the DSM-4 that was being used, DSM-2 was being used previous to that, and mm -hmm. autism was under mental conditions. Mm -hmm. That is why a child would be sent to Mathare for mm -hmm. diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Now, as the research goes on, as we get to uh, uh, understand and do more technology, so is helping, we are getting to place it specifically where it should be okay yeah does somebody get cured of autism or do you say that you then are able to live with the challenges of the condition what happens there's no cure for autism okay we might autism is managed mm. you might it's a condition that is managed you get you, you know how to live you know what are your triggers so there's a lot of intensive therapy especially by aba practitioners mm. uh, who are called applied behavior analysis pr practitioners and they will give you how do you re relate to this because and as a person with autism or an individual with autism one of the biggest challenges is understanding social cues when when you give me a fish if, if i'm talking to you and you do this mm. automatically you know something i've said might have offended you mm. yes I'm, a, a child with autism might not that, that just goes yes, on you you have me, you might have an issue with your face so i keep going on they don't realize this so it is teaching them. We, we teach them specifically. When you see this face, this is anger. This is frustration. You teach them to see it. So you see it, you relate with it. 
that is how it, so it is teaching them how to manage it there's no cure for autism uh, an individual early interventions allows an individual to function fully as an independent individual but they will still have challenges but what you do is these are your triggers this is how you respond to them this you is know, who you can go you to. know the thing about modern science yeah it has taught us that for everything that we are now currently told there is no cure you must not take it that that is the, the end th yes it is not the end there are many things that we're told there were no i mean before penicillin because alexander fleming came across it accidentally uh and the, the very idea <clears> of <throat> the see or concept of uh, <laughs> antibiotics was foreign and alien now from what research has informed us what part does one's hereditary play in autism do we know do we understand how it can be passed on from parents to children? Do we understand the triggers that may exist, even in the mildest form, but which later on can grow? And then do we know that once a child is born, that there are things that, or there are situations within their environment that can not only trigger, but can exacerbate a condition that was mild and make it something that it wasn't originally? So, um... Currently, mm. we know very little <laughs> in matter science and autism. Mm. Why? Because, like I said initially, it, was, it appears differently to each individual. So when we have a case study, it is easier to have a case study when the condition is the same across the board. But when a condition is unique to an individual, we have to look at all these parts. So, of course, continued research will give us more information about it. But currently, what you, especially in the African setup, in the Kenyan context, is equipping our locations with all these specialists who continue doing the study. Unfortunately, in the country itself, we are less than 100 speech therapists in the country. So, and you look at it in that think of this even having a thousand a ten thousand doctors is still not enough for the kenyan um, yeah. population so we are very few of us what can we do we are doing a lot of community outreaches we're equipping the teachers so that the teachers can see these red flags and start in there are things that you can intervene from a school setup like modify this communication if this child has an issue with settling identify are they seeking to climb on locations is it about movement give them something to step so they can move and settle in a class setup so how do we equip these locations and we are, we are going out there and doing a lot of community outreaches we are training families we are doing caregiver workshops so that eventually what we will have is having before we have nannies in the household the nanny knows how to work with children regardless of what it is understanding that tv is amazing but tv is also a hindrance how do we keep we go back to what a child belongs to the village and not to a household. I remember growing mm. up, I would be whooped by my neighbor and they would report and my mom whoops me again. We, right now, you do that to a child, even in a school setup, it's you're yeah. taken to the police yeah. and everything goes <laughs> south. Yeah, Going back to, uh, we've picked the Western, the Western culture a lot, mm. which is very sad. We've picked everything good, bad and evil from the West and we've forgotten our traits as Africans. That this child is brought up by the society and not by one person. Mm. Yeah. You know, prevalence, I'm still on this thing of research. Yeah? What do we see, if you look at the spectrum of what autism, what aspect of this spectrum do we see as common? Because you say it's broad, yes. But surely there must be some aspects that are more common than others. Well, um, common in what sense? Possibly? Common in that it's more pre prevalent than others. Mm hmm so right now what we're seeing in it and it's because of the diagnosis i don't want to be quoted that i one boy said this mm -hmm. um what we are seeing right now is because of the uh, um the with knowledge and information mm. it, it may, most parents are seeking this intervention and what is happening is a child is given a diagnosis of each child has level one autism because they're not settling in class they're having this and this they're having this and this but when the interventions are put in then the parent comes back to us and tells us i don't think my child had autism mm. i think they were just not settled so what we are doing is this when a parent gets the diagnosis this is what we're advising them it's good you've gotten the diagnosis please leave dr google alone for a bit just come to us <laughs> let, let us um let us give you interventions if you focus 
on the condition mm. you will not focus on the interventions mm. so you've been given that is a label you've been given and luckily in this country it's not yet going to your record mm. that this child this person has this condition it's not unlike in the US when the diagnosis is done then it goes Scares to the permanent your record yeah mm. so it is we are not yet there yet so when the parent gets that diagnosis or notices this red flags yeah. come in you'll be given the diagnosis but let us focus mainly on the intervention Wamboi, thank you very much for joining us today. Wamboi Mbogwa is a speech therapist. On this Health Friday, we we're discussing autism, delayed speech in children. Thank you very much for all the questions and uh, all the interaction that we've had this morning. Spice.